Hi everyone, I'm Sister Mary Elizabeth, Miss East of the World Community, and I would like to welcome all of you that are joining us this Friday, January 22nd, to do like the Divina Interpreti Sacred Scripture. Today the Church celebrates Saint Vincent. The first Spanish martyr, Vincent, was a deacon in Saragossa, Spain, in the 3rd century. Deacons were, were responsible for the local church's works of charity and mercy. Most of them, most often, the only form of organized relief. And preaching was often part of his work. Vincent excelled in his duties and became known to the hostile human authorities. He was arrested with his bishop, tortured, imprisoned, and killed in 304. He is a patron of wine producers, sailors, and brick makers. For the liturgy of today, we will be reading the letter to the Hebrews, chapter 8, verses 6 to 13. The responsorial psalm will be Psalm 85, and the gospel is Gospel of St. Mark, chapter 3, verses 13 to 19. Let's start the reading of the Word of God for today. A reading to the Hebrews. Jesus has now obtained a more excellent ministry than the priests who offer gifts according to the law. And to that de degree, he is the mediator of a better covenant, which has been enacted through better promises. For if that if the first covenant had been faultless, there would have been no need to look for a second one. God finds fault with them when he says, The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will establish a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not like the covenant that I made with their ancestors on the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt. For they did not continue in my covenant, and so I had no concern for them, says the Lord. This is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, says the Lord, I will put my laws in their minds and write them on their hearts. I will be their God, and they shall be my people. And they shall not teach one another, or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest. For I will be merciful toward their iniquities, and I will remember their sins no more. In speaking of a new covenant, he has made the first one obsolete. And what is obsolete and growing old you soon disappear. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Once again, we see the deep knowledge of the author of this letter to the Hebrews. He So the verses from today is the same last verse from yesterday. So we start with verse 13 that says, Jesus obtained a more excellent ministry. And with him, he is a mediator. We have a better covenant. And then he says, why a better and a new covenant? Because if the first and old covenant was without fault, was faultless, was good, there wouldn't be any need of for a new covenant. And Jesus was clear that he brought a new covenant. And then the author quotes prophets from the Old Testament. Specific here, he quotes Jeremiah. And he, in Jeremiah, and you can look for it if you want, Jeremiah chapter 31 verses 31 to 34 is this first part of when he is quoting the Old Testament, the Old Covenant, when he says, The days are coming, says the Lord, then I will establish a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. So he's quoting prophet Jeremiah here. And the Lord told, the Lord God told many prophets that he wanted to bring a new covenant. 
but the first covenant that he made with their ancestors weren't working anymore. People did, was deviated by the first covenant, so he wanted to bring a new covenant. And in the end, in the last verses, it says, in the author of the Hebrews, of the letter to the Hebrews says, in speaking of a new covenant, he has made the first one obsolete. And what is obsolete will pass. So it is the new covenant that we have with Jesus Christ. That is the reason that we are in church, that we are all together. The old covenant is a teaching. It teaches history, teaches how, G how God made his, his plans for humanity and always teaches how human beings, how our human hearts can be so weak in many ways. But the new covenant, the new covenant that Jesus Christ brings, that is life eternal with him, that's the one that we are expecting now. That's the one that we put all our hope and that we receive this better promise. The better promise is the new covenant. And the new covenant is eternal life with Jesus Christ in heaven. The responsorial psalm today says, Show us your steadfast love, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Surely his salvation is at hand for those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. Steadfast love and faithfulness will meet. Righteousness and peace will kiss each other. Faithfulness will spring up from the ground, and righteousness will look down from the sky. That the Lord will give what is good, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness will be before him, and will make a path for his steps. The psalmist starts, Show us your steadfast love, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. That should be the refrain of our hearts. Lord, show us your love, show us your salvation. And the Gospel today, Gospel St. Mark, Chapter 3, verses 13 to 19 says, Jesus went up to the mountain and called to, he, to him those whom he wanted, and they came to him. And he appointed twelve, whom he also named apostles, to be with him and to, send, and to be sent out to proclaim the good news and to have authority to cast out demons. So Jesus appointed the twelve. Simon, to whom he gave the name Peter, James, son of Zebedee, and John, the brother of James, to whom he gave the name Boanerges, that is, sons of thunder, and Andrew, and Philip, and Bartholomew, and Matthew, and Thomas, and James, son of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus, and Simon the, Z the Zealot, and Judas Cariot, who betrayed him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. St. Mark is, is a very, very brief Gospel. He doesn't give us many details like the other evangelists. But he, he has special words that he uses. He wants to convey his message through simple sentences, but deep sentences. When he said, Jesus went to the mountain and called to him those whom he wanted. Jesus called to him those whom he wanted. Jesus wanted them. Jesus want, wanted the twelve. That twelve men. Those men who were fishermen, tax collectors, uneducated. He wanted them. A traitor. He wanted them. Jesus called to him whom he wanted. Those whom he wanted. And they came to him. So a very simple verse. But we can meditate so deeply upon it. Jesus calls whom he wants. If Jesus is calling you, it's because he wants you. 
he and Jesus may be calling you to priesthood, to religious life, to family life, to be a missionary somewhere in the world, or to be a witness in your workplace, in your school, in your house, for your family, for your friends. Jesus calls whom he wants, people whom he wants. He calls us because he wants us. And if we had this understanding that he wants us, we would never leave him. We would never doubt him. We would never doubt the mission that he entrusts to us. God, God the Father, gave a mission to his son, Jesus Christ, to bring to us a second covenant, a new covenant. He wanted to end with the first covenant, giving us a second covenant. God wanted that Jesus would do that. And Jesus, the son of the Father, the one with all authority, he wants us. And he wants to give us the vocation that we that we deserve not that we deserve but the vocation that the, the God the Father has for us and we can never doubt it so those 12 men they were weak they were sinners but they loved the Lord and that was enough for Jesus so may in this life so divino we can tell the Lord Lord I love you Lord, I would do what you ask of me because you want me. You want me to do this. And because you want me, I will do that. May the Lord give us the courage to do that and to say that today. And I would like to leave you today with a quote from St. Vincent. No one ought to be confident in his own strength when he undergoes temptation. For whenever we endure evil, evils courageously, our long suffering comes from Christ. Everything we have come from Christ. So may the Lord bless us today. And may He show us His will and how much He wants us to serve Him. Amen. <laughs>